couple of things. Just over two weeks ago, we saw the latest review from the Financial Services Ombudsman, Bill Profiska. 8,135 complaints in 2012. That's up 12% 12 on 2011. Payment protection insurance complaints up by an incredible 216%. Banking complaints about customer care and maladministration doubled in 2012. Everything up, including perhaps some good news in the last six months, the number of complaints settled by financial institutions before a full investigation had to be ordered. That was up by 50% and people did get compensated to a total of 1.75 million euro. But who were the biggest offenders? Well, I don't know because the financial ombudsman is not allowed to tell me. But as it happens, he is here. Bill Profiska, uh, you're very welcome to the programme. Bill, thank you for joining us. Well, thank you, now, Pat. <clears throat> why can't you tell me? Because I don't have the power to do that. So you have internally a list uh, of the big offenders and you'd love to tell me, but you can't. That's exactly right. There is some talk of legislation going to be introduced that will allow you to name and shame. Now, what stage is that at? That's right. There's been talk of that. Look, we are four years into the financial crisis, and this is something that I have been calling for for every day since I have been in this job. And this was, it's not my idea. Actually, my predecessor asked to have this power. And it's very simple. We want to create virtuous competition amongst the providers. No one wants to be worst in class. So okay. we want to be able to say who is doing well, where are the complaints coming from, and how are they being dealt with? Okay, the, the number of complaints that were settled, you know, complaints made to you and then the financial uh, institutions come to the party, that's up by 50%. Uh, why do you think that is? Why are they improving? They're still bad, but they're improving. Why? Well, first of all, again, you can't generalize. There are some providers that are doing quite well. We have been working with providers. We have been Can you even tell me who's doing well? No. You're not allowed to do that? Correct. You see, we have been banging the drum. Look, there is an easy way to do this job and there's a hard way to do it. The hard way is for every complaint to go all the way through the process and we have to make the decisions. The easier way is for the providers to get to know our methodologies, know how we're going to decide cases, and then settle cases that they know they're going to lose. Now, we want to bring about this virtuous competition, and therefore, we would like to basically publish league tables. This is done all over the world, in the UK, Australia, New Zealand, and it is an important part of trying to get the industry to behave okay. better. In your experience of those that are not settled or even those that are settled, how do they arise? I mean, how much is just incompetence? How much is malice? How much is bad faith? How much is pure greed? Well, again, it is somewhat hard to generalize. What is quite clear to me is that many of our financial institutions are under a great deal of pressure. Many of them maybe have seen their workforce decline. Many of them are, frankly, facing their own very severe financial pressures. And then for some, it would appear that the complaints process is seen as simply overhead, as a cost, something that is not given priority. Now, we think that dealing with the legacy issues of the financial crisis, we have to make this a priority. We have to help people get through this very difficult time. So, so hang on, what you're saying is the, the ethos which most good businesses have, which is the customer is always right, that's the attitude you should come to. And if a mistake has been made or if there's some bad faith on either side, that is revealed. But in this case, you're saying that the customer is an irritant. Well, that's the case with some providers. Can I give you one small anecdote? Yeah. Where I was at a conference in the UK when I first took up this job, and there was a financial provider there that said, we have the grandmother rule. What's that? Which means that we treat complainants as if they were our own grandmother. And that's how we deal with it. And they said in the past number of years, we never had a single complaint that was upheld by the UK Financial Services Ombudsman. We think that is a good ethos. And we would like to do everything we can to facilitate that here in Ireland. Um, how many of the complaints are actually misunderstandings by the customer? For example, you, I know you have a lot of complaints about trackers, people who've been off trackers sure. and frozen, then they tried to get back on. And maybe the fine print told them they couldn't get back on, even if the manager told them something else. Well, um, 
basically of all the complaints that go all the way through the process we uphold approximately 25 percent so most complaints that go all the way through are not upheld but we think that sometimes even in not upholding it if we give a reasoned decision explain things fully to people we think that actually is an important part of our service as well uh, the mis-selling of payment protection insurance, um, that became a big issue in the UK and I think as awareness grew here it became a, a big issue here. Um, what are the sanctions for financial institutions who are guilty of that? I mean, it's basically theft. Well, mis-selling is something that occurs across a range of financial products, not only payment protection insurance. And so our methodology of looking at payment protection insurance is the same as it is for anything else. Now, we've seen a very significant increase in the number of complaints there that's driven because people are in financial distress. We also see some complaint management companies coming in. But interestingly enough, in the most recent period, the complaints as a percentage that we were upholding were actually coming down somewhat. And we don't uphold any more complaints in payment protection insurance than we do in insurance in general. In fact, we uphold fewer. But uh, surely if someone is sold something that was not relevant to them, they thought they had protection in uh, case A, B or C, uh, that was their understanding and maybe they were talked through it and they don't have that uh, cover, what happens? Well, in those cases where it does arise, where we found, find that there was mis-selling, um, the remedy can be either that they get all their premium back or that the claim we direct should be paid. So we have the ability to give compensation in an individual case. We're not the regulator in that we don't penalize the institution. Yeah. We don't fine them. That is not our job. Your job is to represent the consumer and to give the consumer um, what you think that they deserve. Um, you, you believe that the status of banks and financial institutions generally in the community has changed and not for the better. Well, I mean, there was a time, it wasn't that long ago, when your bank manager or financial advisor had a certain amount of awe, perhaps respect, and maybe fear in the country. As I've spoken about in the past three years, there's been a paradigm shift. And clearly people are angrier, they are more skeptical, and, and frankly, they're in a great deal of financial distress. And so the messages that we're giving to the fan financial institutions is that if you do your job today, the same way you did five years ago, you're going to fall behind. The world has changed. Right, you have to do things Unless differently. you can name and shame them, they're not going to worry about that, well, are they? Well, we think it's an important tool for us to be able to do that. And so that's why we call again for the government to introduce the legislation because, again, we have the information and we can do it at no cost. No cost whatsoever. No extra cost, you're no doing it cost. anyway. Now, uh, medical insurance, uh, try plan X, plan Y, plan A, B, C, um, if I can discover it, I can get a cheaper plan that gives me exactly the same thing if only the insurer will tell me about it. I mean, this is a crazy situation in, in health insurance. Well, you're looking at a market that has changed dramatically in the past few years. There was a time when the products were quite simple, they were homogenous, and all the costs were simply passed through. People never had to pay anything. That world has changed. We have noticed an increase in complaints in the area, and it's quite obvious that there has been a certain level of consumer confusion. And so we've called again upon the providers to invest more in consumer education, because it's quite clear that there are some consumers who don't know either what they used to have, and they certainly don't know what they yeah. have now. Because if I'm buying motor insurance, I can get uh, fire, third party fire theft, I can get comprehensive, I can have windscreen breakage and so on, but I can tick them off. Mm -hmm. If I go into the minefield that is health insurance, I find it hard to compare product with product. That's it, and so no, we've called upon providers to give extra care to educating the public here. There is obviously some degree of consumer confusion. Mm -hmm. Now, the personal insolvency uh, legislation, which is coming down the line eventually, what do, you, what do you think of it? Is it adequate? Well, again, you know, uh, the answer to that question, unfortunately, lies above my pay grade. All we do is adjudicate the complaints. But clearly, it is quite clear, dealing with the legacy of the financial crisis, it's very important that people get some finality in their lives and are able to move forward.
But this notion and, that they can come after you, you finally get out through your bankruptcy or your insolvency and up for three or four or five years afterwards, they'd say, oh, you've made a few, Bob. You've actually done well in your business. I'll have that, thank you very much. That well, seems again, daft. Well, again, I mean, we're all in favor of finality, but the terms of the legislation are simply outside our remit. We take I take it you rule. don't like it. We take the rules that are provided by other people. We're simply the ombudsman. We adjudicate the complaints. Um, you mentioned some claim firms uh, setting up in business, and they, some of them claim that they can jump your queue. They can actually, if you've got a complaint against a bank, they can get you from number 2,000 on the list up to number 5. Possible? No. No. Um, a couple of things. People are fully entitled to seek advice or representation about their claim. It could be a solicitor. It could be their brother-in-law or best friend. It could be a claims firm. Everyone is entitled to do that. Number two, we don't give favoritism to anyone. And also number three, and this is very important, we do not cover fees charged by advisors or by claims. So it firm. comes out of your take. It comes out of their take. Any compensation which we award are directed to the complainant and it's up to them to decide how much they're okay. going to pay. L last question. I have a complaint about IBRC. It's now in liquidation. Can I still go to you? No. The legislation put a stay on all legal proceedings and that includes complaints to the financial services. So even only. if I was in your system near the top of the queue, you have to stop? That's what the law says. Bill Profiska, thank you very much for joining us in the program tonight. And that is all we have time for. Back tomorrow.